A new production will soon debut at Florida Southern College. Our moccasin athletic teams have begun their seasons, and is Brittany planning a comeback? Find out on FSC Today. Good morning and welcome to FSC Today. I'm Olivia DeArmond. Our weekly newscast will keep you updated on the latest news, sports, and entertainment. More students than ever before are coming to college having never lived with anyone. Community living staff and students shared their tips on how to deal with roommate conflict. Hello and welcome to Go Healthy FSC. I'm Maggie Sutton. We'll keep you updated on fitness tips, healthy eating, and college life. More first-year students than ever are coming to college having never lived with anyone. Community living staff and other students share their tips on how to deal with roommate conflict. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> FLSouthern.edu says that 95% of incoming students have never had to share a room with their siblings. For these students, coming to college and living with a roommate can be a challenge. I pretty much just had my own room. I mean, I had sister, a sister, and but we each had our own rooms. We just had to share a bathroom. It was awkward at first, like the first few weeks, but other than that, I was pretty comfortable. Resident advisor Katie Loy believes that new students struggle with roommates more today than they did in the past. I think they do, even just from when I was a freshman to now as a senior and having seen them through all four years. Um, I can definitely see what I feel to be more conflict. Loy says that it's important to make your expectations clear with your roommate before conflicts arise. Have an open discussion. Don't be scared to talk to them because a lot of times the little things um, grow into big things when they're not uh, addressed. Buckley and Amick say to always be upfront and respectful with roommates and to involve the resident advisor if conflicts arise. Definitely go to your RA because that's the person that knows how to deal with that kind of stuff and you know keep it between you and your roommate or you and the RA and tell the truth. It's mainly just about respect and knowing that they have a different lifestyle than you do. Learning to live with someone different than you is a really important experience so don't uh, at the first sign of trouble, just give up and ask for a single. Try to work things out because working with people is going to be something you do your entire life. For more information on how to deal with conflict in your residence hall, contact your resident advisor or a community living coordinator. Well, that's it for today's show. I'm Maggie Sutton. Like us on Facebook and stay healthy, FSC. Freshman orientation may be over, but the Association of Campus Entertainment's Weeks of Welcome are in full swing. The group has already done several events, such as a free novelty giveaway, a block party, and bingo. ACE is planning to have Carly and Donnie, a singing comedy duo, perform tomorrow night, and a foam party is scheduled for October 4th. For more information, visit the FSC ACE Facebook page or check the calendars in your residence hall. If you enjoy slapstick comedy, come out to the Buckner Theater beginning September 26th to see On the Razzle, written by Tom Stoppard. The production is based on the same play that inspired Hello, Dolly. On the Razzle is directed by Paul Bowick and will showcase the talent of Florida Southern's theater students. Tickets are free for FSC students and $18 for adults. Curtains open at 7.30 p.m. And for even more laughs, you can purchase tickets starting this Thursday to see Drew Carey perform live at the Lakeland Center. His comedic comeback is scheduled for January 10th, 2014. Now let's check in with Victoria Guerin for our Southern Sports. Hello, Mock fans, and welcome to this year's first edition of Southern Sports. I'm Victoria Guerin. Our moccasin athletics have begun and are on the way to bringing home some conference titles. Let's get you caught up on the past week in Florida Southern Athletics. Our men's soccer team defeated Warner 3-1 on Saturday night, while freshman Nico Guevara made the record books as the first moccasin ever to debut with three assists. The women's team began their season on the road in Valdosta. The Lady Mocs fell in both games with a 0-1 loss against Valdosta State and North Georgia. Volleyball opened their season this past weekend with the Terrace Hotel FSC Classic. Tony D'Angelo has more. Our ladies
Lady Mock split the first two games of their tournament this weekend at the Terrace Classic, played at the Jenkins Fieldhouse on September 6th. In the first match, we came out cool and collected, and so I think that was just the difference. But we have we had moments in the second match of that first match we played, but it just didn't work out the way we planned. We played very well. Everything flowed really well. Um, second game was a little bit different. We kind of came out with not as high of energy and stuff, and so kind of dug ourselves a hole at the beginning, and then we were just kind of trying to play catch up the whole time. Our middle blockers do a really good job of closing the block most of the time and getting tags and touches to slow down the ball. And then our setter, Kendall, sets up perfect ball mostly all the time. So. Brendel, I mean, as a freshman, she came out very strong. Um, her energy level was great. You know, she got a couple of good kills on us, or for us, that, you know, really gave us all the momentum. I thought everyone played pretty well and stuff. We all have spots that we can get better at. Our Lady Mocks went on to win the final two games of the Terrace Hotel Classic, improving to a 3-1 overall record and giving themselves plenty of momentum for the rest of the season. For Southern Sports, I'm Tony D'Angelo. Over the weekend, the men's and women's cross-country teams competed at the USF Invitational. After a two-hour rain delay, it was decided that the runners would race in a men and women combined 5K. The men tied for first overall, with senior Chris Yunichko coming in third in a time of 14.49. The women finished sixth overall in team standings. Both teams returned to action this Saturday at the University of Florida Mountain Dew Invitational. Be sure to go out and support all of your Moccasin athletic teams and follow us on Twitter at FSC Sports. For Southern Sports, I'm Victoria Guerin. In local news, the Lakeland Police Department needs your help in locating five suspects who robbed a gas station at gunpoint. The incident occurred at the BP station located on Cleveland Heights Boulevard. The suspects received an undisclosed amount of money before running westbound towards Robin Road. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Lakeland Police Department at 863-834-6900. Tomorrow marks downtown Lakeland's 10th food truck rally. A variety of vendors and more than 20 trucks from all over Central Florida will gather along the Munn Park Square starting at 6 p.m. While most businesses accept major credit cards, the Downtown Lakeland Partnership says it's best to keep some cash on hand. And the 10th annual Cardboard Boat Challenge will soon be underway. This Saturday from 8 to noon, teams will make boats out of cardboard and duct tape and race them around a marked course on Lake Hollingsworth. Children's activities, food vendors, and live music will also be provided. If you'd like to participate, you can register a team at cardboardboatchallenge.webs.com. The first Repticon show featuring the Florida International Reptile Expo will be held this weekend at the Lakeland Center. Seminar officials say that participants can expect a showcase of amphibians and reptiles, including some of the most venomous. The expo will also feature raffles and vendors. The family-friendly event runs Saturday 10 to 5 and Sunday 10 to 4. A list of showtimes and a map of the exhibit can be found at Repticon.com. And the Lakeland mayoral election is just around the corner. Current Mayor Galby Fields is up against former Lakeland City Commissioner Howard Wiggs. The next election will be held November 5th, and the runoff election will follow on December 3rd. In addition to the mayoral elections, today is the last day to vote in the student government elections here at Florida Southern. Campaigns have been underway around campus the past week, and it looks like it will be a competitive race. The link to cast your ballot is live on the FSC website. Now let's check in with Dion Spires with this week's Entertainment Rewind. Hello FSC and welcome to the first installment of Entertainment Rewind, where we bring you the latest on celebrity gossip and Hollywood trends. I'm Dion Spires. It's been weeks since Ben Affleck was cast as the next Batman, sending comic book fans in a frenzy, but recently celebrities Tom Welling and Hugh Jackman have both come to his defense. They both seem to have faith and assure fans that Batman will be fine, with Welling noting that Affleck is a tremendous actor and a wonderful director. Jackman said that Affleck will relish in the opportunity and crush it. In music news, Britney Spears may be making her next comeback soon. Not having a solo hit since I Wanna Go in 2011, Spears is set to release a new single within the next month. She's expected to release the song on September 16th and appear on Good Morning America the next morning. 
Talks of a new single began when Spears posted a photo from a video shoot on Twitter saying that the new track was a little dirty, a little flirty, and she couldn't wait for the next day. Watch out, Miley. Britney may be coming to reclaim her spotlight. Speaking of Miley, none of us have yet forgotten about her twerking disaster on the Video Music Awards just a few weeks ago, but I'm here to remind you that things could have gone even worse for the pop star. Take a look at this video that went viral over the weekend. You see, there's always a silver lining. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Tune in next week to see what my crew and I can cook up for you. It could be fun. Back to you, Olivia. Thanks for joining us on FSC Today. We hope you enjoyed our first newscast of the year. Be sure to tune in next week for the latest here around FSC and the community. Have a great day.